Greetings, trackers. Welcome to Magic on Mylar, rare film on VHS. The first Adjust Tracking Festival co-presented with Lunch Meet VHS magazine and website. Tonight, we'll be viewing James O'Barr's The Crow from 1998, a rare student film made by David Ullman, adapting the comic book of the same name. With me tonight is Josh Schaefer of Lunch Meet VHS, who has become the film's champion. When Josh shared about it, I was shocked I hadn't heard uh, of this uh, independent shot on video version of The Crow before. Josh, how did you discover it? Yo, well, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate you uh, just inviting me on. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here and celebrate all these incredibly weird and radical films, man. So yeah, stoked to be here. VH stoked to be here. So thanks a lot, yeah. Okay, so I thought about this and I really just can't remember like the exact situation, but I do know that I found it on the internet um, kind of randomly either through an image or something, but I remember it was like a lightning strike. Like I saw an image of this film, I said The Crow, and I was like, what is this? And I kind of looked up The Crow fan film or The Crow shot on video, because that's what I thought it might be, and it was. And I found David Ullman's website, and uh, he has a whole website dedicated to this, and he has the whole story and um, about his creation of The Crow. And I was immediately fascinated. And I was like, what is this? I've never heard of this. Um, so I immediately reached out to him and asked if he had a copy uh, just laying around or, you know, if I could purchase a copy from him, you know. Um, and he got back to me the same day, I think like an hour or two later. Um, and he was incredibly kind. He was like, oh, yeah, I'll just send you a copy. And he did. Um, he sent me this copy. And then he also sent me one second. He also sent me this copy. Um, which is a later run. And he sent me a very nice note. And I was just blown away when I watched it. Um, I mean, it, having never seen it before, I was like, w what is this? You know, like it's a remake of The Crow, but made by teenagers on video? Had to see it. And I, I watched it and like I said, I was just, it was incredible. And I had all this information. I was very fortunate to, to, be, to come in contact with David and be like, you know, you get this insider information about how this film was created. Um, and it adds this whole new depth, this whole new angle to it, because you watch this film and it is a shot on video film, you know, made by teenagers and you can tell, right? It has its shortcomings or whatever, but it also has these incredible triumphs inside of it where you're looking at these, you know, teenagers with absolutely zero budget, like zero dollars, like no money, making this um, adaptation of this uh, seminal work, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's really mind blowing when you think about it because for two reasons, because nobody really knows about this movie, okay? Nobody really knows that this movie exists. And it's attached to one of the most popular, um, you know, cultural idols of the 90s, The Crow. I mean, it was huge. I mean, like, and, you know, James O'Barr's uh, comic has its own following. And then the Brandon Lee film came out. And then that tragedy happened. And then it got more big. And then, you know, what? Merchandise, you know, video games, you know, all this other kind of stuff happens. But there's this shot on video version made by teenagers in, you know, in the 90s. So it adds this incredible angle to this cultural thing 
and it's important for shot on video filmmakers to look at. It's important for shot on video fans to look at because it's in that canon. And it's also fascinating to look at look at it inside of the Crow cultural fan base and what is it, you know, because it was never actually distributed. Okay, let's get one thing clear. They were making this movie for zero dollars with absolutely zero intention of distributing it. Like they didn't think like, oh, we're gonna make this movie and it's gonna go on a rental shelf, like a lot of shot on video filmmakers do. Um, you know, it, you, you create a film to distribute it or, or, you know, like make money off of it or whatever. You know, a lot of shot on video filmmakers were doing that, but not, not David. I mean, he was making a movie because he wanted to make a movie. He knew, he just saw the movie The Crow, you know, and um, so David and Matt Jackson just saw The Crow in the theater and they were like, oh man, this movie's awesome. And I remember Matt Jackson, um, you know, the co-producer and, and it's basically David's best friend in high school who helps with the movie. And he he's like, well, he remembers somebody saying like, if you like the movie, read the comic. And they're like, oh, there's a comic? We didn't know that. So they went and picked up the comic and they used it to make their version of The Crow. You know, these, these dudes were just making like, I mean, they weren't goths or anything. They were just soccer kids. You know, they're kids that are into soccer and they liked making, you know, cool little movies. And I mean, uh, it's an incredible story. Okay, so when you watch this, know that there's so much more. And I think the really special thing is that David documented all this. He documented everything that happened while making this movie because it was a huge part of his life. It was like a coming of age, right? Like he, from 14 to 18, 19, he made this movie with the people in his town with no money, getting yelled at by his parents, you know, going through relationships, everything. Like, this movie helped shape his teenage years, you know, in so many words. So beyond just the film being awesome, right, being, being this uh, brand new vision of James, o, James O'Barr's vision, this brand new adaptation of James O'Barr's vision, you know, through the shot on video lens, which is, which is you know, important and in interesting to the shot on video fandom. But also there is this incredible array of information about it like how it was created and how it affected the people that created it because you don't get that with a lot of films you know there's a lot of mystery and mystique to a lot of shot on video films because you don't know anything about them and that's kind of cool i think that's really cool but i think the crow is special for all of these reasons and more and i think once you watch the film you'll kind of understand what i mean you know so being able to give it this context before you dive in is is like I said, it's special and it's, it's cool. Um, and it adds a lot of contextual information that makes it for a more rich experience, I think. Right, so we're seeing, we're seeing these young, practically non-filmmakers become filmmakers through making this film. I mean, they, they learn how to make a film. They, they complete it once and then they go back and edit stuff out, edit stuff in, redo it over four years. And like this movie becomes a part of them, right? I mean, they're just doing it because they felt driven to do it. Um, they just were like, we want to make this movie or we don't. Screw it, we're done. Wait a minute, let's, let's hop back into The Crow. And it's, it, it becomes bigger than just a shot on video movie. Like, it, like I said, it is awesome because it's a shot on video um, you know, kind of you know, horror, noir, drama, romance, thriller. You know, there's all those elements. But it, it's, it's just, there's so much going on here. And we know that because of the way that David documented it and continues to. And that I want to share it with VHS fans and shot on video fans because yeah, this is this is a cool movie and it has a lot of history and I mean it's it's just it's the crow I mean like you know 
it's it has all this cultural relevance right and it also has cultural relevance to shot on video independent filmmaking diy no budget we're shooting this in our backyard in our basement filmmaking and it's resounded underground in the crow fandom like on boards and stuff like that because like i said it was never like i said it was never actually distributed it couldn't be they didn't have the rights to it so how it survived is david would make you know like 100 copies you'd have to ask david i don't know i think it's somewhere around there but then people would get it and then they would dub it and bootleg it so this movie has solely survived through fan distribution. That's the only way you, you would see it, you know? And it's, it's fascinating because the movie has its merits. I mean, like it's, it does capture James O'Barr's vision inside of the comic. I mean, they use the comic as a script <laughs> for the movie sometimes. So, I mean, it, it, it's incredible. It adds so much to to the shot on video world, the Crow fandom world, and the world of just seeing budding filmmakers come to life through making a film. It's really special and it's really cool. But essentially, you know, a lot of people just make a damn movie, right? And that's what this is. But you don't get the whole story. You know, I you can get the whole story here because because of what David's done. And I'll be releasing that documentary that I made called Inertia, Remaking the Crow, through Lunch Me, on tape, this winter. So if you like this film, and you're intrigued by it, and you will learn more about it, you can when, I, when we release the, v, the VHS of the documentary, which is a full-length documentary explaining how and why they made this movie and how it affected them as people. David Ullman and Matt Jackson. So it's really fascinating. Um, and I hope that you really enjoy the film. A couple last things. Um, you know, as we're looking deeper at independent filmmaking, you know, on shot on video filmmaking, as we're searching these movies out, this is a very valid and triumphant film. Like, it's, it's made by 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds through the course of four years, just grabbing their friends out of literally meeting them at the high school and walking over and, and you know, just filming something, anything. They didn't even have, they didn't even know they were gonna film that day. They just filmed something, hoping that it would work, sometimes. It's totally scattered, you know, and it, this film, the way this film comes together, knowing that, it makes it that much more amazing. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a four year, five-year labor of love and it's it's just it, it one of what I really want to say about this movie is that it's incredible that it exists it's incredible that it's incredible that David and Matt put this much energy into it especially David the way he gets into the character he becomes the crow or he becomes, you know, I mean, he looks like indistinguishable between him and Brandon Lee sometimes. It's crazy. Like the way David, excuse me, the way David is built and his, his physiognomy and everything, it is, it's perfect. It's kind of uncanny sometimes. And it's really cool. And I think that this is a film that needs to be seen by shot on video fans. This is a film that needs to be seen by Crow fans. And this is a film that needs to be seen by anyone who appreciates any, any angle of independent filmmaking. Because this is the ultimate. This is the, like, you know, one of the ultimate backyard films. There's so much time and love put into this film. And I hope you really love it. Thank you. Um, I don't know what else to say, man. I think... Um, I kind of just went off on a tangent and I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully you can cut some stuff from it and you can use things. Um, but really, I'm just thrilled to, to share this movie and thank you so much for having me on here, man. Um, it's rad to be able to share it with a bunch of people and to get David some due credit and 
let people know that, whoa, there's a shot on video version of The Crow? Yes, there is. And here it is. Now we just press play, right? Wow. Fascinating, Josh. Thank you so much. David Ullman has also joined us for this introduction, and I have one question for him. Since Josh has given some great context for the film here, some great background, I'm curious, uh, David, about your personal connection to the source material and what kind of role it played in uh, perhaps your own transformation story or transformative journey. So I came to the source material uh, of The Crow by way of the Brandon Lee film. I, I was a big fan of his in 1992 after Robert, well, even before that, I was a big Bruce Lee fan, big Brandon Lee fan. I continued to be a huge fan of that family um, and, the, and their ongoing legacy and its impact in my life is really Im immeasurable. And one of the first like seismic uh, <laughs> imprints that the Lee family left, other than, you know, growing up a kid in the eighties and, uh, and seeing Bruce Lee everywhere uh, was, in 1994, when the Crow film was released, I went to see Brandon Lee's last film. I was generally aware from some articles I'd read, like in Entertainment Weekly, that I still have somewhere, um, about the source material, this like dark and gritty comic book. And I wasn't someone who really grew up reading comic books. I had some Batman comic books. I loved Batman very much, in fact. <laughs> in fact, I... Uh, as a nine-year, ten-year-old, very inspired by the uh, dark gothic uh, Tim Burton Batman, I spray-painted black the mask, that, like the 60s mask that I had, you know, from the Adam West, uh, you know, from a co costume shop, you know, like Kmart or the like, and got a Dracula cape and tucked in the, the collar and, uh, and some, you know, moon boots, as my wife calls them, like Napoleon Dynamite would wear, and basically kind of cobbled together my own black Batman costume and ran around my block, like, protecting it from crime. And I rode a banana seat bicycle to differentiate it from my normal bicycle. Anyway, you can see that I was a very uh, impressionable and creative kid. I had, uh, I had just started making kind of VHS movies. I mean, I made VHS movies as a child. Like, uh, my dad would film me and I'd go around reenacting the um, Universal Monster films. And uh, so I was a very imitative kid. I'd get inspired about something and I'd want to kind of emulate that and uh, really to a fault. I mean, I'm a musician as well and I played cover songs and I'm very much in the style of the people who, who sang them and I had a gift for that kind of mimicry, but um, <laughs> I don't know how well that served me, especially when you're going and making like cover movies. Like people make cover songs, I made cover movies on VHS that I decided to take four years of my life to uh, to do. And, um, and that started with seeing the Crow film and then getting the Crow comic. This is my old copy. Uh, it, I gutted it, you know, basically to make like an illustrated script, which eventually I kind of uh, put together into this binder with like stills from the production and stuff. But anyway, I, I was so moved by the book that when I first read this, you know, I got it at like a local comic shop. I, I want to say even bought two at once. I don't know. Or maybe we went back very quickly thereafter and bought another. And uh, it just, um, I, I sat down to read it. I stayed up all night. It like scared the shit out of me, broke my heart and really cracked open a world of its own influences, you know, from the, the poetry reference to the music. You know, and of course, the Crow film had this amazing soundtrack introducing me to Nine Inch Nails that I became obsessed with and then The Cure and, and all that stuff. And um, and then the book sort of takes you down different paths, like literary references and, and joy division of it all. And it really just, uh, it opened up my world from kind of the action movies and maybe the horror movies of like the 30s you know, and kind of combine those two things. It's like an action horror movie, but there's also this really romantic aspect of it. And um, 
and so yeah i mean we spent like over four years sort of shooting and reshooting things trying to make the most faithful version that we could and um and it was only recently in kind of preparing the the lunch meat cut that uh you know we put back like i put back like six minutes and match cut the um footage to the original source tapes and and all this but uh I came across a quote from James Obar, not a quote, but a, a piece of audio. I don't know if it was on the DVD or even this, uh, this like standalone commentary I got through like crowfans.com 2000 era. He was talking about, he was writing about a time when he was 16 and had had this really hard life leading up to it, but then met this really wonderful young woman who's the basis of the Shelley character. And like after two years of sort of blissful, youthful romance, she was killed by a drunk driver. And he wrote the book over the course of probably a decade uh, to, as he said, sort of purge himself of that, all that negative uh, emotions. Anyway, and so I, I was really inspired by that cathartic element. And uh, I think I used it in a similar way that I didn't have nearly such a dramatic uh, story or things to work out. But um, he grew definitely as an artist. If you look at the early pages to the to the to the later pages, you can literally see a progression of somebody um, mastering their craft. Now, we definitely I did not master anything, but I learned a ton. And even in the last scene of the film, our adaptation, you you actually see me. Um, in the span of a couple seconds that actually spans like the four years. So you see me kind of by the graveside and the pouring rain, I'm, I'm literally like 14 there in the crow makeup. And then it cuts to this moment in the comic book where, where Eric embraces the figure of death. And that was me at 18 with like actual, I mean, if you look closely, you'll notice that like I sort of have curly hair that because of the black and white, you can't tell is brown. <laughs> um, and uh, and a litter, little bit more just like full in the face from growing up a little bit. But it definitely was a coming of age process for me. You know, 14 to 18 is a super important time in a young person's life. And I spent mine doing this. And so I'm really grateful to, uh, to John and, and Josh and uh, you guys for, you know, giving me the the interest, you know, to the, the people are still interested to see this movie that I made when I was a teenager is, is really something. And so um, I hope this little intro here gave you a, a sense of where it came from and what it might. Uh... Oh, I don't know if this has to be unbroken, John, but I realize A, I go on seven minutes and I'm getting so far afield. Um, let me pause here. I'll try to give you a kind of a, a wrap up and uh be, I'll keep an eye out for email in case there's you can't salvage this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a man of many words.